All right, guys. So the next video we got to talk about, um, the video we uploaded earlier today, is um, seat kick variations um, after Masa's um, Muay Thai fight. Did we ever post the highlight girl from that, Masa? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. On Instagram. Um, yeah, you're on Instagram. Instagram. Or Instagram. Now, Both there's Instagram. nothing about teeps that should get me censored on Instagram. Instagram is <laughs> out. You censor me. <laughs> Instagram did bleep you on uh, your teep explanation. But you and Griff were talking about teeps and um, the Okinawan variation and traditional Thai variations of some teep kicks. We talked about a lot so, of stuff. Y'all did talk about a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. This is actually one of my favorite videos. I did for the bouncing kicks, which I'll talk about right after. I'm going to release that one. Mm, be coming. So, Master, did you show you got a lot out of that explanation on the teep kicks? Yes. You really don't like them. Teep the dip. <laughs> if I'm right here, teep chambers, I'm going to teep the dip. And don't ever think that your teep has to be straight line. Turn it at an angle. I want you to go side kick. Turn it offset. What's the Kieran saying about? That's what I was trying to tell her about. Hey, I talked about Kieran. Uh, yeah, you did. Because of the, uh, the Wing Chun kick. I'm gonna say no because I don't know what that is. It kept trying to turn corner teeps into quarter teeps. Uh-huh. I had to correct every time it said teep when it kept changing to teep. That was aggressive. What? Were you like playing with him? I was playing. I was nice that whole seminar aside from whenever I hit Masa in the face with my rod. So even though I'm changing sides, I'm staying in the same size stance, but I'm kicking with the opposite leg. And I can just face the opposite wall. Hey babe. Sounds a little weird, right? Kind of like a, the oblique kick? Kind of like an oblique. But I'm, I'm lining... The way you're going with that kick, it's a little bit different because it's like not coming up with the full chamber and outwards. It's kind of like the, a little bit like the Muay Thai leg kick. That kick up with like a slight incline angle rather than being full straight. Right? It's a regular teak. Here. I'm throwing it like an oblique. I'm going to stutter step here. Two. That's enough to touch the hip. That's non telegraphic because your hip's staying in the same relative position. Then you can step through and you can punch him in the balls as Masa would like. Or the shot. Or tie boxer. If I'm here, I kick. Hey, I may step off slightly. Throw the leg kick instead of touching the leg on the inside. I'm going to go low and I'm going to kick at the opposite wall from where I am. That sort of teeth variation. Would you say that's a common T variations, or were, are those things that you really haven't seen as much as you think? Because uh, I've seen one? those before, for sure. Which one? All of them, really. Um, some of that them might just be my background, from, though. Some of them I've gotten from Sabocon, and I hadn't seen them anywhere before I trained Sabocon. Some of them mm-hmm. I haven't actually even seen in T. It really just, I picked them up as I went, because once you do enough stuff, you kind of just take what you like and disregard what you don't. That's an interesting one, because people don't believe that karate at all has... You know, teeth kicks, or they just think they have the snap. People also think that karate is just striking. <laughs> my, my biggest argument for that, and we're not going to go off on a whole tangent for this, is um, kumite. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you know the translation for that word? No. Why would I know that translation? I'm stupid. I don't know Japanese. Grappling, Japanese. grappling hands. I mean, the first sparring in karate was... Um, the guy that created Gojuru doing wrestling. If you look into Okinawa before all the Chinese stuff came along, they had Tegumi Muto, which is the wrestling. Wrestling. There you go. But no, teeps. Um, every, they're they're kind of like they're kind of like ass. They're kind of like assholes. Everyone got one, and most of them stink. Right. <laughs> people are going to sit there and they're going to throw a teep the way that they were taught to throw a teep. A lot of people are going to throw a teep, not even extend in their leg. They're not going to have any power. They're going to say, well, this is the correct way. I, I honestly don't care how you throw it. Like, again, I, I do what I like. Those are just different variations that I picked up. Um, I know corner teeps. That's mm-hmm. kind of what Corey loves. Corey likes applying them, but he's got bad hips. So it works for him. I was going to say, I like the corner teep because it uses the the sort of Yin Yang principle idea of like where they have less force or where they're softer in their guard, you can apply heavy force to control their directions. Like I don't, I don't talk about the JKD that much. I really no. don't. But it, it, it's kind of dumb how much it goes back to that. Just don't be telegraphic in anything you do. So if I have all of those different kicks, I'm, I'm of this mentality, and you guys can just 
You guys can disagree with me if you'd like, or you can agree with me if you agree with what I'm saying. Okay? I would rather have 12 different options and be able to pick the one that suits the, the situation that calls for it than have one option with 12 different entries. Mm-hmm. That, what that means is I would rather train 12 different variations of you know, straight line kicking and be able to apply them from the situation than sit there and have one teeth that's only from one angle and then have to use my other leg to apply footwork to apply that. I think it's easier if you just train them separately that, hey, this works here, this works here, this works here, this works here. It kind of just correlates in your mind. You kind of pick it up a little bit easier. JKD is interesting because everyone's like a credit set and knows it to be like the forefather of current MMA or whatever, or Bruce Lee, the forefather of current UFC. I really think the arts that it pulls together really are like in the top tier ideas of combining concepts. Like it had a little bit of karate, a little bit of FMA, a little bit of Wing Chun. And like boxing and Judo! fencing, and it's like it's really odd how like it's less popular now, but it's kind of the epitome of combining shit to make shit good. I think that the mentality of JKD is what every martial artist kind of needs, mm-hmm. and this this is something that I have I have argued with historians about this. And they have kind of come to the consensus of, you know, he's he's not wrong, but he's not correct. <laughs> my my own my own opinion, right? Everyone wants to talk about their art being pure, their art being pure. That's utter bullshit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you look at using just karate, because that's what I have the longest base in, right? You look at karate back in the day. Just looking at Funakoshi, for example. Did he have one instructor? No. Nope. He cross trained a lot. Why? Because hey. This guy's really good at this. This guy's really good at this. It's like a buffet. I'm going to take what I like, and then I'm going to make my own little thing from it. That's how anything is created, right? Everyone wants to talk about everything being pure now. If I train one art just the way that one person taught me, I'm getting their representation of the art. Mm -hmm. I think you owe it to, hey, look into the roots of it. Kind of take what you want. Keep the core aspects so it can be the same art. You Mm kind of throw in your own little twist. Which, in the modern day, JKD says... Take what works, disregard what doesn't, and add what's uniquely your own. I think everything, everything sort of, if, if you look into it, everything sort of comes back to the same place. And that's why everything has a teeth kick and everything has this variation. And if you combine everything, it still works because everything just comes back to the same idea. And I was having this stupid argument yesterday on, um, on TikTok about karate where someone was like, well, no, karate doesn't work, but kickboxing does. And I'm like, well, kickboxing tournaments came from karate and karate guys dominate the kickboxing leagues. And he's like, no, but that's a karate base while they're using kickboxing. I'm like, but the kickboxing base was karate. So technically everything's base. It goes back. And then karate is Kung Fu. And Kung Fu has Muay Thai and whatever the fuck. Everything just goes back to being in the same pool. And it's stupid to say, well, no, because then it's not pure. Or you need it pure to work. Otherwise, it's stupid. It's just like nothing is pure. Nothing, nothing is stays pure. the same. Exactly. Because it's, it's humans passing it down. So humans are flawed. Everyone's obviously going to bring in their own bias. So to say something's pure, it's like, no, that's not how that works. We're human. We make mistakes. We describe things ever so slightly differently. Mm-hmm. We do, you know, as Lo says, what works for us that may not work for other people. I mean, I know at my height, things work for yeah. me better than other people who have a longer reach, you know? I was going to say, both you and Logan do Muay Thai, but you have different instructors, a slightly different Muay Thai history. And he's like three times your height. So I'm not that tall. No, but she's that short. Yeah, yeah. That that is that is fair. I am a I'm an average Mississippi height. A little less than average where it counts. I'm I'm average in the country that I was born in. There you go. There um, you go. Positive so mindset there. Have I have I told you, um, Mr. Frazier's um his, his karate argument. No. What is the semi-modern translation for karate do? Open hand way. Way of the open hand. Yeah. Okay. By that definition, anything in which you punch somebody or kick somebody is karate. No, anything in which you palm somebody is karate. Yeah, yeah if, you, if, if you can, if you if you were striking, right? Because it's very descriptive. Mm-hmm. Open hand refers to hey, you're not fighting with a weapon. So anything in which you are striking with your fist or your hand or your feet or your head or your elbow or thrust of freedom, whatever have you, 
it's all it's all karate. But and when you tell a boxer, when you tell a boxer that, you watch them get mad, and then you explain the history behind it. And they're like, well, I mean, if you're using it descriptionary, then it, it, it does kind of work that way. The same way people will say, well, everything's kickboxing. Well, like, yeah, in every art, you're punching and you're kicking. So if yeah, you're using it descriptionary, kind of then sure. I, I, will, I will say it like this, and I honestly want to hear your opinion on this, both of yours. Kickboxing is modern karate. Think about it. A blanket term that can be used to apply to all things that's taking over in the area. Look back to Okinawa, the indigenous arts. How how many of them can you find now compared to just karate? None. They're gone. They, they're gone. Look at look at the influx of kickboxing. Look at all these traditional arts that were here before that you're not seeing as commonly anymore. Well, we're kind of going. We're 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 in history right now. There's I would just argue so much that everything now. that MMA is the new karate. Because back when in the seventies and the eighties, it was like Taekwondo school. That's karate. Fucking Hungar school. That's karate. Oh, this guy's teaching some random kickboxing t- class. Yeah, call it karate. And now you got all these karate guys that add a BJJ, and it's I don't know. You got this fucking kung fu guys that add some BJJ, and it's an MMA school. Like, uh, there was an MMA school up where I was looking to go to university, and its striking base is uh, Panzukan. They still said they're an MMA school. Well, I mean, mixed. It's it really goes into the argument, and I don't talk about it enough. But one of my previous BJJ coaches, right? Mm-hmm. He was a cage fighter. He hated being called an MMA fighter. Hated it with a passion. Do you know why? BJJ superior? No. (laughs) BJJ wasn't his only art. He trained some Western Malay kickboxing, and he was training karate under us, and we were kind of, we were training that for the the grappling training. Because, you know, my karate, we've got a lot of takedowns, but we don't have as many, we don't have as much ground work. Most of our submissions are neon belly or more floating type holds. Mm. So we were training that off. Anytime anyone called him a MMA fighter, he hated it with a passion. Because he said by someone calling him a mixed martial artist, well, an MMA fighter, they're not they're not giving um, homage to the arts that he's previously trained. You sound Which like Rezzy do when you said that. Well, it's it kind of it it, it kind of goes back to my argument against BJJ. Why aren't mm. they giving homage to Japanese Jiu Jitsu to Judo? You're never going to be able to stop saying that, no matter what we're talking about. You're just gonna I, 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 I know, I know, I day. know. But, like, I'm, I'm speaking for BJJ. Like, I'm, I'm not being against them right now. He hated being called an MMA fighter for the same reason that I very much dislike BJJ. Because they just did, it doesn't give homage to it. Too many people now are just saying, well, I'm an MMA fighter. What do you train? MMA? Technically, if I train karate, and then I go and... I, well, if I'm training uh, Okanoha and Kojiku, right? Mm-hmm. My base. And then I go and I decide I'm going to train Saibokan Shodan Uyu, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm technically a mixed martial artist because I'm mixing two disciplines. If I if I train Muay Thai, as in Masa's case, and then I go and I do Hitler Kempo like you, I'm <laughs> technically a mixed martial artist. You can't do that. It's in, the, it's in the state, like one state above you, like an hour's drive. An hour's drive? Dude, I live on the line. Exactly. Even less than. No, give, but, me the, give me that. Going back to, I will give you the address. No, but it goes back to, like, fucking, um... Oh, what the fuck was I gonna say? Like, it, the the argument, is MMA a martial art or is it a good set? You can go to a gym and they will say, we're training you MMA. They won't say you're learning BJJ and Muay Thai. They're saying, you're gonna learn to fight with the techniques that apply only to the rules of MMA. So it won't be a way of planning so you could go into a BJJ competition or a Muay Thai competition because there'll be techniques that are allowed in there that aren't allowed in the cage. You are simply going to fight for the cage, so we're going to keep you to mix fighting for this cage. So my, I mean, I, I don't have a ton of experience with MMA gyms, but from what I've seen, a lot of gyms that say MMA, they generally have it broken down into classes. So mm-hmm. it won't just be like, oh, all of these classes are MMA. It'll be like, oh, you know, these are the BJJ classes. These are the Krav Maga classes. These are the whatever, you know, et cetera, classes. So yeah, there there was a you you had like a kung fu school and you was right three hours. I I was checking. Um, yeah, that was I went to an MMA gym when I first moved just to check it out, and they had like um, they said judo, krav maga, kung, uh, kung fu, some BJJ, that kind of stuff. Um, but a lot of it was just conditioning and 
it, I'll be honest, with, like the, the one I went to in particularly wasn't that helpful. No, it was horrible. I'm sorry. Like you, we met you when you were checking it out and you were like, oh, guys, check this out. And we just. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I, no, I have yeah. never been rude to anybody over what they want to train or where they want to train. Yeah, that place is horrible. Bull fake. This is fake, fake news, fake news, it's fake news. I have one yeah. word okay. for you. Hmm? What's up with me? He went to a, t- to a fucking Tung Sudo school. And hey, hey I, I told him ripped. if that's what he wants to... No, I told him what I thought about it, but I said if he wants to do that, then he should, and then they kicked him out. Why did they kick him out? Because he wanted. He asked them to spar. He, he, he asked went to sparring, spar. and they said anyone seeking violence cannot train here. They said any. They they said if if you want to spar, that means you're too aggressive here, and I'm gonna text every other master in the state and tell them you're not allowed in their school because you're a violent person. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Someone doesn't um, know what martial arts is. Anyway, I think yeah, I feel like that's kind of dumb. I think yeah. that's what we're going to say on this, though. I think that is... Tea kicks are good. I think that's... We, we kind of lost track of that, but tea kicks yeah. are good, guys. You, you can um, team somebody anywhere. Instagram doesn't like the word ass. Apparently. Even though it can mean donkey, but whatever. Donkey! What are you doing in my studio? L- listen, listen, listen. I was, I was talking about kicking someone in the ass, right? And now you're going to get PETA on us, and I can't have that happen again. <laughs> Again. Again. Oh yeah, when you were shooting turtles. Had y'all on call. And 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 you said it was for the environment, but the truth was you wanted a fucking turtle shell for fucking Kobodo to do your fucking shield. And I never got one. I think if I have the sword that's used for as well, I've seen Kobodo instructors use this sword with the turtle shell. No, don't you... I really like this sword. It's so fucking cool. And it was so cheap, but it's so nice. The weight is so it's good. It's funny. And it's sharp. We're talking about uh blanket terms. You know what bow or con refers to, right? Nope. A staff that is right, six, yeah, bow. Yeah. six shaku long. Mm-hmm. Shaku's roughly a foot. Mm-hmm. Right? Joe's, I think, like four and a half to five shaku, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Rochin. Do you know what Rochin? Like Timbe Rochin? That's you term, right? So, Timbe Rochin. Your shield and your short weapon. Short weapon. So, in theory... Anything can, works. Yeah, like it's it's just a, it's the ideology of hey, you this have a weapon in your hand. I can't remember how exactly everyone put it. You just you just like that. So I like in it. theory, I've seen people use I've seen people use daggers before, right? Yeah. I've seen people use short spears before. I saw one idiot because he couldn't find anything else to train with. He used a dollar store hatchet. Shit, it works. Nothing, it works. There's nothing wrong with it. It just it doesn't look really cool. Y'all can get fucking like axes for a dollar. No, like dollar store. It's like Dollar General. It's like five, ten bucks. Oh, uh, fair, fair. Yeah, a lot of our dollar stores aren't a dollar. For I was stuff. about to say fucking America. Dude, thing, Dollar think. Tree's not even a dollar anymore. Dollar Tree's never been a dollar. So in Mississippi, Dollar Tree used to everything was a dollar even, and you just added tax on after that. Now it is a dollar twenty-five or a dollar twenty-seven, something like that. 